wants to find the domain of this function. So what type of function is it? What type is it? Is it quadratic? Is it linear? Is it radical? It's a rational function. What do we worry about a rational function? What is the, our only worry if it's a pure rational function, which it is? What is our only worry here? We don't worry about anything else. They can be undefined. Yes, and when is a rational function undefined? When the denominator is zero. Excellent. So y plus x squared cannot be zero. So the domain consists of ordered pairs having the property that y plus x squared is not zero. Is this okay? Anyone? Yeah, I had it equal in like yes. all real numbers. I'm sorry? I had it like equal in all real numbers, but it makes sense that it doesn't equal zero. It's a rational function. That was the first step, right? So first I look at the function. If I have, let's say, uh, g of x comma y equals the square root of x plus y, what would be the situation here? What would be the restriction in this case? What do I have to write for this one? Greater than or it, zero. But you didn't say what? Uh, x plus y. Perfect. So the domain for this one would be all real numbers uh, that all, all uh, ordered pairs, x comma y, having the property that x plus y is greater than or equal to zero. Perfect. Excellent. Is this clear? Anything else? So let me write the domain for this one. All ordered pairs in the form of x comma y and uh, with the only property that whatever we choose will work except when x plus y is less than zero. Good, so let's go back to the puzzle. So whenever we see this symbol, what does this mean? What does this symbol mean? What is it telling us? What do we need to do? Find the derivative. Correct, oh. yes, but it also says that y, or f of x, is a function of x. Ex exactly. Function of x only. Awesome. OK, when we see something like this, y. X, f, f, x, x. So, yes, so this can be denoted by fx. Good. What does it mean? Partial. Yes. So then we have at least at least two variables, if not more. So maybe I shouldn't write this because I don't know how many variables. Or I could put just dot, dot, dot. So this means that y is a function of several variables. Definitely not just one. For sure, otherwise we will never use this symbol. Yes, it's a partial derivative. Perfect. But please remember, this symbol tells us immediately that, that the function, or y, must be a function of several variables, at least one other. Otherwise, we will never use this symbol. Perfect. To find the maximum for a function with two variables, we need to determine what first. Let's, let's list them again. What do we find first? If b is greater than 0. So first of all, we have to find fx and fy, because we are talking about two variables, right? So this is from last time. So first we find fx and fy. What do we do with fx and fy? We find the f of x and y. 
we set them equal to a zero. And from this system, assuming we are getting an ordered pair or more. So in step one, or part A, we find f x and f y. In part two or part B, we set those equal to zero, creating a system to find at least one ordered pair. Perfect. What do we find next? f x x, f y y, and f x y. Excellent. Why? Because we need to do this. f x x evaluated a comma b times f y y also evaluated a comma b. We multiply these two minus f x y evaluated a comma b, but we have to square this number. Awesome. Now, so there are here three possibilities, greater than zero, less than zero, or equal to zero. Which of these three is the only relevant case for us? Greater than zero. Greater than zero. This is the only one. So now here there are two options. And the options are fxx is positive, evaluated at a comma b, and fxx is less than zero. So what does this imply and what does this imply? Not just this, d positive and fxx positive, d positive and fxx negative. Positive is the relative uh, min. min, of course, and this is a relative max. And these, this is not applicable, and this means no, no max min. No max min. Not test, detest, not applicable. That's it. Perfect. So uh, are there other questions for me? or we go back to 6.2 to practice more. Okay, so let's open, I'm opening the book right now. Where is my book here? Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Here it is, okay. And we want to look at 6.2. Any questions from uh, my lab math or something else? Or we go to page 567. I would like to look at um, You choose, of course, if you want, but I would like to look at uh, maybe 27. If we did not, I don't remember if we did 27. Let me look through our notes from last time. Did we do 27? I don't think so. I think we chose something else, or it was 27. I don't have it. I don't have 27, I think. Is 27 okay with everyone? Oh, you couldn't even see it. I was thinking of this. But you can choose anything you want. 27 works. Okay, so let's look at 27. And 27 on 567. We just want to practice these um, partials again. So f of x comma y equals 3x squared y minus 2xy plus 4y. Yes, we can look at something like this afterwards, if you'd like. Something, let's say, maybe more sophisticated or x natural log y. Yeah, we can choose anything from here as well. OK. So we are asked to find all four. So we start with fx. So we are differentiating with respect to x. Everything else is considered constant. We differentiate x squared, and we get 2x multiplied by 3y. 6xy. That's it. We are differentiating with respect to x. 2y. Yes, with minus. Very good. We differentiate with respect to x. It's you. Perfect. Fy. We differentiate with respect to y.
3x squared. Very good. We differentiate with respect to y. 2x2 plus 2y Very good. We differentiate with respect to y. 4. Awesome. Let's find fxx. We differentiate this again with x. Everything else is a constant. 6y. That's it. We differentiate with respect to x. 0. Perfect. Fyy. We differentiate with respect to y. 0. With respect to y. 0. And with respect to y. Zero. Perfect. Zero. So now we want to differentiate fx with respect to y and then fy with respect to x. So we are differentiating this with respect to y. 6x. That's it. Minus with respect to y. Negative 2. Perfect. So now we differentiate fy with respect to x. If we don't get the same thing, something is terribly wrong. So let's see. We are differentiating this with respect to x. 3x squared prime. Negative 2x prime. Negative 2. Good. And of course, 4 prime is 0. So let's see if we want to look at uh, anything else from here. If you want to choose, please do so. And then we'll move on to the D test. Can we do 36? Yes, 36. Perfect. In 36, we have f of x comma y equals y natural log x. Perfect. Good. Good. So we want to find fx. We are differentiating this function with respect to x. So this is a constant. It will stay in front. And now I have to differentiate this with respect to x. That's it. You can also write it as y over x if that's more convenient. You can also write it as y times x to negative 1 if that's more convenient. All of the above. Now let's determine fy. We are differentiating this with respect to y, and now this is a constant. So I'm differentiating with respect to y, and I get just ln of x. That's it. I get 1 times ln x. Perfect. Now we want to find fxx. So now that's why I prepare this like this. I don't want it this way. I don't want it this way. This is easier to differentiate. We are differentiating again this quantity with respect to x. Negative, negative, y. negative y times x to which power? Negative 2. That's it. Perfect. Now we want to find f um, y, y. I'm differentiating this with respect to y. What do I get? Would it be 0? Excellent. Good. So now f x y. So I have f x, which is here. And now I differentiate it with respect to y. This is a constant. I'm only differentiating y. x to the negative first. That's it. Now we want to differentiate y with respect to x. And it better be the same thing. Otherwise, we're in trouble. We differentiate this with respect to x. x to the negative 1. Yes, 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1, and they are both the same. Good. So now let's move on to the d test because we did not have enough. One example is not enough. I just want to see the page number 576. Five seventy six. Okay, so now let's choose. I don't remember. I can tell you which problem. I have it right here. Let me see which uh, D test we chose. We chose 7. Yes, we chose 7. So please choose anything else. Number 3. 
we want to look at number three. Okay, perfect. Since the function has more than one variable, 